All right, everybody. I think we're live, and it is episode. We'll do a little sound check, 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 check checking check. it out. Okay. Yeah, we were about ready to go, and I heard this like. <laughs> yes, and I'm gonna say right now. If you are enjoying that noise as much as I was a minute ago, you'll be happy to know that I changed this cable and we kind of make shift it real quick. So get this this part that's built into the stand is yep. It's just really loud. Don't it's do that just, again. Just ding, dingle dangle in there now because uh, it's a dingle dangle. New cable, no more. And I will probably either get tangled in this or spill my wine with this tonight. Just saying. It's a good chance. There's a good There's chance. Definitely a good chance. Uh, let's do a quick, you know, a little check in. I love, I love seeing who's here as everybody starts checking in. We've got uh, some people already started. What do we got here? It says, "Hey, oh, everybody checking in with the 11 week old new baby Freya in Michigan." Hello, and we're out of Jägermeister. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, darn. I don't know anybody that would be upset about that, except for maybe you guys. <laughs> what else have we got here? It says, hi, from Minnesota. Hello, hello. Hey, from SoCal, Bird Dog Whiskey. All right, all right. And then... Hey, Mike and Oakley, Trix's sister. What else have we got... Yeah, I know. I did the eyelashes thing uh, because basically after being pregnant, all of my eyelashes fell out and I'm still getting used to them. So thanks for the shout out, Kelly. Not not sure still if I, I'm loving them yet, but it's definitely different. <laughs> They're a bit, but I like them. I mean, I know it's taking get something to get used to, but mm-hmm. I like them. Well, so thank you. We've, um, I, while people are checking in here, we'll, we'll touch base with y'all in a second. Um, we have something kind of fun. So this evening, first of all, I don't know what y'all ate, but we ate like kings tonight. Um, Traeger Grills does a pretty wicked job of cooking food. I'm just going to say it like tastes Like a delicious different. job. It just tastes different. It tastes better. Okay, so I took a steak, and every year... Okay, c- continue your story. Yeah, l- Come on now, let's just, just tell the story, okay? So every year I buy a bunch of meat. When I go to South Dakota to guide, we eat prime rib uh, with every single group, which is the way that I cook it, I am going to say that's up there at the top of my list of things that I make well, okay? Prime rib, but it's easy. Sous vide it, and it's perfect every single time. Season the crap out of it. I can show you how to do it sometime, but it's uh, it's delicious. So we do that, and when I buy the meat... Because I'm buying in bulk, I buy, for up there, I buy two cases of steaks, which the it's the whole, um, it's the whole rib, basically. Lo- loin? It's rib. not a loin, oh, oh, it's a rib. Oh. Yeah, so. Uh, that's chunk, why I'm not in charge of cutting well, or doing I've the I've called meat. it a loin for years, and I got corrected, so maybe that person that corrected me was wrong, but. <sighs> See? Um, th- Tall glasses, <sighs> personal problems. Personal you, know, you got the arm in the way. And, well, and I, I have don't, the free zone I'm not here used with I'm the, to drinking left-handed. I'm, That's the, the problem. I'm the drink master, so I get my right hand available. Anyhow, I buy all of the um, propane grills are cheating. Ha ha! So I buy all of the meat all at one time, and then we cut steaks for the rest of the year. Basically, I cut them out, and I usually cut them a little thicker-ish. I mean, inch and a quarter, inch and a half, not terribly thick, but just good steaks. Try and get them as unique or as not unique, as uniform as is possible. And then I thought this time I'll cut some fatties. I don't know. What was that? Almost three inches, two and a half inches. Like two steaks together, it seemed like. Maybe a little almost, over. Almost three, right? Yeah, probably Pretty almost close. three. Yeah, so, so probably a solid three inches, okay? And I took that and wrapped it up to kind of keep it uniform so it wasn't this oblong steak shape. Wrapped it up. Threw that on the Traeger at 165, just the smoke temperature. And I let that baby roll for two, two and a half hours, then took it off and I threw it in. So we just got, um, mama, I love her to death. We just got a new stove cooktop. Okay. And it's because the old one didn't work. 
All right. We had one burner left on the electric grill top that thing. actually worked. Cook top, kind electric of. grill. Yeah, it would cook kind of. So, anyhow, we got a new one. And looking at the options, she said, I would really like gas. And so I started looking a little more. I'm like, for me to run a gas line, all <laughs> it's going to be difficult. Okay. So we compromised, compromised, found, and they're, they're, they're pricey, but. I absolutely love it. It's an induction cooktop. So you, so I threw, I, I gently set the cast iron skillet on the induction top and it threw some butter on there. And I'm talking seconds. I didn't get to tell you this yet. It was like 10 seconds. Poof, that butter was all melting. And then I cranked that baby all the way up to high and said, let her Sear, eat. Sear, baby. Yep. So then I stuck the meat on there, seared it all the way around. Just... <sighs> It was really good. I mean, your mouth should be literally watering right now. And if you and actually want to see the entire process, Ethan storied it most on it. Instagram yeah. and yeah. Facebook. Check it out. So Check it yeah, out, most folks. of it other than us eating it. But yeah, I didn't do that. I can maybe you heard me eating some of it. I don't know. So um, anyhow, the biggest thing is the tra- well, I don't know. Traeger grills um, have changed a lot. I bought one way back in the day that I did not love. Okay, it was the. What I was don't it remember what it was called. It was called a little Tex, I think. And I kid you not, the thing tipped over probably twenty five times, and and it still worked. So it I did, mean, there it is, did still. There so is there's that. some durability factor to it, but it didn't really seem to regulate temperature right, and I had a lot of issues with different things, probably because the damn thing tipped over <laughs> so many times. But dang Kansas wind! I didn't love it. Okay, so then I got a We pretty new much one. grilled most of the time instead. Yes, and I'd be like, oh, grilling. Then w- I got a new one, okay? And that thing I fell in love with. Liked it a lot, but still had a grill for a secondary option for steaks. And, and then, burgers, because we kind of did burgers and steaks. Because I think they need to be cooked a little faster. And again, the Traeger it was like chicken, pork, any of the other whitish meats that need to be cooked a little slower and smoked, delicious. Steaks, meh. Hamburgers, meh. But this way that I did things was absolutely delicious. And then the other side of it, if we're just cooking a steak, this new grill that I have, it's the 885. It will get up to ah, like 500, which is hot. 550 maybe. Roll that bad boy up it uses a fair amount of pellets when you do that, but it cooks. And then I was like, hey, guess what, gas grill? Goodbye. Because now not only does my meat taste delicious, it is also cooked fast like I want a steak to be cooked. So freaking awesome. Had it. And all of those things being said, now that you're all envious of what we ate for dinner, (laughs) we paired it with something new. I'm not drinking bourbon tonight because I've already started in the vino category and what does that say right there? Yes. Standing stone. In, vineyards. In Cat and our spare time, we've actually started a vineyard. <laughs> it's up in Maryland. Because we have so much spare time. And for things the like grapes that. are delicious. I love stomping them with my feet. We travel up there at least once a week just to... And even letting the dogs stomp the grapes, Yes, right? and that's a big part of it. Dog hair included with every <laughs> bottle. If you guys are interested, I mean, I'm telling you, no. On a serious note, though, I came across this vineyard that is called Standing Stone Vineyard. On Instagram. Yes, found them on Instagram, and I was like, what? No way. You share the same business name as us. I need to order some wine from you. I'm hoping they return the favor and say, what? You share the same business name as us. I need to order a dog from you, but I don't think they will. <laughs> and this that we decided because red wine goes with red meat they say it is a merlot 2019 and mom's got glass i i i'm pouring more for me just a little i i am pacing more. myself because you know new baby and you can only pump so much and have so much wine and that sort of thing so <laughs> but pacing. Uh, it's delicious all right so um I wanted to test it out. It, we're it's, not affiliated. We're not getting anything. No. There's and nothing going on And it's not our wine. Here. I mean, we did not I was stomp joking. It. Okay. I know. I'm just throwing that out there. So. In case you're looking, though, and you like the name like we did, it's delicious. And they ship. I mean, we didn't go out That's there right. and pick it up by our... I don't even think it's Maryland. I don't have any idea. I think New it's... New York? Uh, 
Let me look it up. Seneca Lake. I don't know. New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. New York. Seneca Lake. That's not very far from where the old Bobster lives, I don't think. I don't know. But it says produced and bottled by Herman J. Weimer Vineyard Route 14, Dundee, New York. It looks like it's less than 30 minutes south e- southwest of... I like Pinot Noirs as well, Don. So, uh, but we picked, from, what did we pick? We picked a Merlot, a Cab, and it said a farm red. It a was just farm like a red table. or a table red or yeah. red blend, something like that to try. But did they have Pinot Noirs? Um, I think so. It's next an hour time. and a half from Bob's place. So next time I'm up there, we might have to just, yeah, jimmy, especially jimmy if they do like down. vineyard tours or wine tastings or anything like that. We so. could taste the wines. Let's see what they've got on here. But um, while Ethan's Googling that. Standing Stone Wine. Standing Stone Winery. It's closed today. (laughs) Or by now. Let's see here. They had a little of everything. I just went red because why not? I prefer red wines. Which is a surprising turn of events. It's not the way that... Uh, not the way I started out. I was definitely a sweet wine girl. So they have a Riesling, Riesling, however you actually say it. I don't know. Uh, yeah, remember me. Come on, folks. I'm coming back for more. Uh, 2019 Merlot. That is what I got. Yep. Then they have a new release three pack that includes what looks like a... I don't know what that is. They do have a... A dry rosé, right? Did I say that right? And then a select... Do you know how to say that? No. Okay. Moving on. Uh, all right, let's go. Uh, sommelier is here. What? Uh, so, so what is that? Say, how do you say that? And somebody's literally going to just type out the exact same word that is there. Yeah, but type it out for us. Be a smart but, ass. But type it out Love phonetically. It. Yeah, phonetically, so, please. Like, how do how you say, say that? Um, they have some dry Riesling, um, another rosé. They have Chardonnay, Farm Red. Uh, Petite Verdot. Uh, I don't know. Mother no idea. Fancy stuff. Uh, Cabern- cab Sauvignon, right? Sau- Sauvignon. Um, that's why I just call it a cab. Okay. I'm and super fancy that way. I, they they I don't didn't see have a Pinot. Pinot Noir, which is probably why Ethan didn't order one, because he does know that I like Pinot yes, Noirs. Yes, I do. This three-pack of the new release, does it include Pinot? Yeah, I guess our palates just change, and as we get older, we appreciate wine a little bit dessert wine it's german okay i like it um no they do not have pino well it might have to do with the territory and the type of grapes available for growing not enough about wine (laughs) thank you phonetic phonetic appreciate you okay so all of that being said, the wine's delicious. The we'll see what we think of the other two. Gertz Minor. Gertz Minor. Okay. Gertz Minor. Gert. Gert. I was close. Yeah, sure you were. I don't know. if We play that back, but uh, <laughs> I'm getting told Riesling is appropriate. We called it Riesling. Riesling forever. Uh, yeah, we were also in college. We're wrong. Yeah, <laughs> we don't know anything. Okay. Yeah. All I know is that this is delicious. Cheers. Okay. And um, all of that being said, we have a couple other things that we like to mention every time because it's important. One of which is that, oh, somebody is saying naughty things here. What does this say? Beers are going down in the heat. Thanks for the, oh, yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, show. There you go. You didn't say anything naughty. Yeah, sometimes filters. Yeah, filters. They they thought you were bad, JGSP. Okay. A um, couple things that are important here I have to mention. Uh, first and foremost, number one, sponsor. The folks that are making this stuff work, okay? This includes 
Yawa, which we take time out of our day and family to spend with you, okay? We love doing this, and we want to hide. What are we hiding? Run. Hello. <laughs> Hello. There we go. Okay, so we take time out of this to do this with y'all because we love doing it. We enjoy y'all, and we appreciate you, and we want to give back a little bit more here. Um, this sponsorship, if you will, is Patreon, okay? The patrons of Standing Stone Kennels are the biggest supporter of everything that happens here. Um, that includes every single video that goes out, the equipment that's necessary for that, the time that we put into it, the evenings that we spend doing live chats so that y'all can enjoy that. The video all editing. Of all of it. Yep. All of it, all of it, all of it, okay? Every, every dollar goes back into that. And, um, you know, there are other ways to continue to support, and that's uh, a lot of how this is all working together. We started in an online store, it's standingstonesupply.com. And we put all of the things that we use and recommend there. We try and provide as competitive and good deals as well as have special sales throughout the year, including a Father's Day sale that will be coming up. And if you are in our newsletter list, you will get the updates on what those things are. I know most of the folks that are watching here have spent plenty. But if you have a friend that is in <laughs> I'm I'm going to try and be brutally honest, okay? But if you have a friend that has a dog that maybe doesn't know about us yet or doesn't have some of the amazing products and you say, "Hey, you and your dog suck and you could use some help." <laughs> um send it along, all right? And he's saying that in the nicest way possible, of course. You and your dog suck. But brutally also, honest, folks. Starting I mean, out early. We haven't even gotten to that segment yet. But we also are always trying to add new things to the store, things yes, that we 100%. use or have tried or things that you guys are specifically requesting that we get on our store. Um, so we are always looking to add new things um, and do product review videos and things like that. A couple of those that will be upcoming is a crate comparison video shortly. Yeah, I don't know if they're going to be independent videos or one giant video of all the comparisons. Or both. Or both, because we have all of the crates are showing up here, and people are like, oh, you'll love ours the best. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, um, we are 100% honest about what is and Unbiased. what is not. Unbiased. Unbiased. We're not right? bought. I am, I'm just saying here, this crate has these cool features. This crate has these sucky features. <laughs> Make the decision for yourself. There's no such thing as a perfect product. There's not. There are pluses and minuses to everything, and you have to find out for what your usage, what you see as the pluses and minuses for that specific category and how they work together, right? So that is definitely coming out. A few other people have mentioned to me recently, hey, when's the next guy with the pink gun video coming out? I'm going to tell you I apologize for the delay in timing, um, little boy, and training dogs have kind of uh, <laughs> crushed the guy with the pink guns channel for now. Um, it will come There's in. There's another one coming that you're prepping for. So Yes, I'm trying to help make sure, though, that the guy with the pink gun channel is not guy with the pink gun has pigeons channel. Because that's pretty easy for me to do through the spring and summer. And Well, that's the thing. Like, your channel will just be kind of seasonal. There will the be things. seasonal things as we rotate through yeah. stuff. I, I am going to tell you, though, this is bird dog related. Um, we're running low on pigeons, and I've been calling around, and there's not a lot of folks uh, with them right now for some reason. I had some really good sources, and I'm, I, I, will tell you, I will tell you I'm a secretive pigeon man, okay, right now. If you have pigeons and you call me and you say... I have pigeons. Do you want to buy them? My answer is, and my immediate answer is, I will buy all of them. And then we negotiate a price, which I am more than fair. If you tell me, hey, I've got pigeons, and I will sell them all to you for $5, I'll say, how about five and a quarter? And you only call me when you have more pigeons, okay? This is usually how this negotiation process works. I am happy to pay quality money for the birds because they're hard to come by. Now, the problem comes in when the pigeon guy that you've got lined up, all of these pigeons, on the third go-around, you go, usually he calls me every, like, two or three months, and he's got a whole wad more. You call him, and you say, hey, 
Bubba, where where are the pigeons? He's, ah, I found another guy that said he'd pay me five fifty. I'm like, bro, why don't you just call me and say, hey, I need five fifty, and I'd say, how about five seventy five, and you'd shut your number off, okay? I like all of the pigeons, right? And here we are, pigeonless. They've been bought out by other people. I'm not a pigeon hoarder. I'm not. I am providing to all of the folks that are out there that can't get them, as well as we use the crap out of them here in training, and we have a lot of dogs that are here working, need the birds, okay? So all of those things being said, running short on pigeons here as because I have shipped out to, and I explained before, we're providing kill pigeons to people at $0 profit just so that you folks have the availability of them. It's still not cheap because the shipping sucks and all those things, but I'm not making any money off them, but I kind of oversold what we had, and now I need some. And it's turning on hot, so Can't shipping ship them anymore. is kind of a non-issue right now or non Non-option. Non-option. Option. Yeah, right they'll now. just cook in the box, And folks. we're not going to let that happen. So, um, and the other side of it is. I'm not a, a hoarder. Of, not a hoarder because a <laughs> lot of the people that reach out to us that have questions about how to get live birds for their training sessions are also our patrons. And we yes. want to be able to provide the tools and the training equipment and the things that are necessary to help you train your bird dog. So, offering this service to people that, um, you know, we're trying to help and get their dogs where they want them to be is something that we want to be able to do. So, so uh, long story short, there is a local bird auction. It is the last Friday of every month, and I do believe I checked this, but I'm going to double check it. I think I'm here the last Friday of this month, and Jess, who's an experienced bird auction goer, goer. is going to take me to the bird auction, Under I believe. Her wing. Yeah, she's going to help me, and we're going to go bid on some pigeons and see. Uh, more than likely, she'll probably talk me into something else to bid on. A goose. They have some really cool geese, like pet geese. It's, Maybe a goat. It's Friday the 25th. <gasps> oh, it's a bird auction. We're gonna, it is a bird auction, but there's other random farm animals there, I believe. I think that's where Perfect. Jess bought a donkey one time <laughs> at the bird auction. Maybe. So um, that more than likely will show up on my channel as we attend and bid out, try and outbid all of the other mother truckers that are looking for some birds. And yes, I said truckers, okay, with a T. We will be, we got a little man sleeping. Is he? All right. If you need to, just strap him in. But we're going to be heading there. We're going to be doing that. All right. It'll be fun. It'll be exciting. Okay, we've rambled a bit, and I apologize for that, but it was fun. I enjoyed talking with you guys. No, no, Kelly, no goat auctions, okay? Goodness. I took her to the zoo. Um, Tang Tanganyika? Okay, no. How say it? no, 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 no. Who took who to the zoo? I drove. I, and I suggested it for the boys. Yeah, okay. All right, so we, we completely digress. I've had fun chatting. Uh, we like to say thank you to the folks that help have helped this thing. Kind of give some feedback on where we're heading with this, and then... What's upcoming? Yada yada. Now we need to get into this, okay? We, as well we as mentioned. I want to say we did see the super chat come through. But yes, like we have that. talked that. about last week. William we, Chesson. Mm -hmm. Chesson. Okay. So, like we have mentioned last week, we are excited oh, to do a delicious. little bit different format with our Yawas than we have in the past, and we are doing our <sighs> intro where we talk about current things that are going on. Then we talk about a topic. Then we get an opportunity to hear from Ethan's brutally honest comment section. I don't know if it's going to, like, I don't know if you want me to be angry. It's it's brutal honesty about things, and I'm going to try. I'll get and, better. And not I'll necessarily get, mean, no, just honest. Just and honest. It I, might make I already people started, feel bad. Like, you and your sucky dog, right? I mean, right. it's the truth. You and your dog suck. And then we'll answer some of these questions that are coming through and give yep. priority to Super Chats. We but will roll through Super Chats until we run out, all but right? But we definitely want to change things up a little bit, have a specific topic theme, which this week, if you saw the title, we want to talk about summer activities that you can do with your dog. And then if you guys have subscribed to our channel, which I hope that you do, because we are this close to hitting 100,000 subscribers, yeah. which would be awesome. Hit the old subscribe button if you've made it to 24 minutes and 51 seconds yeah. of this. And then 
next week, I think we're talking about breeding, raising, and whelping litters. Is that kind of it? Next week, yeah. So next week is going to be about the the breeding, the whelping, the what we do raising, here. Raising, socializing litters. Yep, all of the things wrapped into it. Now, we've put together an entire video series about that, but I want to open up some dialogue. There's a lot of folks that are doing it or trying it or getting ready to do questions. it and have more questions that we maybe missed. We are going to be shooting another entire breeding, whelping video, um, and then the entire process of all of it, okay? Yes. But um, then after that, we don't have any topics lined up. So if you guys have suggestions, definitely throw them in the comments. We are happy to talk about things that you guys are interested in listening to. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so as far as um, I want to start this with, I try and do a little extra research so it's not just 100% what you think you have up here because if you aren't learning, you aren't trying. Put that on a t-shirt or something, all right? Um, it's the, the model that I've taken to pretty much everything because I, um, am, I'm going to go with north of 60% self-taught in this sport. Okay. This profession, I did work for another facility and I learned a lot there. I learned a lot of good things and I learned a lot of bad things. Um, you know, and I don't even want to say bad things. Thing, I things learned the way that I wanted to do this way and the things that I wanted to do differently, okay? That's what it comes down to. It's all a personal preference aspect of stuff. The other side of it is I took, and Cat 2, every opportunity to learn. I've read, I have tons of DVDs, which I don't even own a DVD player anymore. So, no, 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 no. We went and got a DVD player because I wanted to watch. Because you got another yes, retrieving series Mike that only Lardy, came out on DVDs. Yes, Mike Lardy's Complete Retriever Trainer or something, which is like the Bible of retriever trainer stuff. And most people have heard of Mike. It's Mike Lardy. Not Mark. It's Mike Lardy. Yeah. So um, the complete retriever. So I sat down and watched that old bad boy, but I had to go buy a DVD player in order to be able to watch it. Um, anyhow, I've got a bunch of DVDs. A lot of it. I even have our employees watch it. I'm like, hey, sit down and watch this. And they're like, that looks wrong. I'm like, yes. Yes, it doesn't look right. Okay. So it's important to be able to recognize, and that's the, the learning aspect of things. You, you can see what's happening right, what's happening wrong, or at least that dog doesn't look like it's responding well to that. Now, that taken out of context can't, it can also be not beneficial. And we see that on the internet on a regular basis. It's happened several times on our channel here, even more recently. And I'm not going to mention specifics because I don't want to give more credit to the individual, but we were tagged in something recently that it was like, they reviewed one of my training sessions and they were like, look at this guy. He doesn't get engagement out of his dog. And he instantly jumps into this crap. And I watched those things too. It was like, what, what have you got to say? What do I need to Am improve I doing on? something Am wrong? I doing something wrong? Yeah. And they started talking about all of these things. Like it was the only time I had worked with this dog and the only training session we had put into this wrong. Okay. This is where we tried all of the things and we're down to, we have a dog with zero desire to work, zero intent on improving itself, zero anything, all of the zeros, okay? And we're trying to help this dog and it comes down to, it's like, dog is pukey. Dog says, I don't want to do this, okay? Anyhow, <laughs> that dude is a mess. You know what I'm talking about, don't you, Kelly? So it, it's like, and then you start watching the video and you're like, why don't you have your shirt on? And yes, okay. It's Not interesting. Ethan. No, no, no. The guy reviewing. Yeah, I was like, uh, Ethan doesn't typically train shirtless unless it's like a water intro, maybe. Uh, it's going to take a few more super chats for that, ladies. No. <laughs> Um, <laughs> have another glass of wine. Yes, ma'am. So anyhow, always trying to learn, always trying to do things. So coming into this topic, I'm like, this is perfect. It's the middle of summer. Let's talk about fun things we do in the summer. And the thumbnail is one of the number one things that we do, which is lake time. Which, it's also Kat's favorite picture, right? It, it's definitely one that I love. I mean, it's been on my background of my phone Okay. For a year now. We're fortunate enough to have access to grandma's boat. Okay. Yeah. That's what it is. Right. So we get to take the boat out on the water. I have been named, deemed official captain. She will not she drive the drive boat, it. but she's excited to go to the lake. That was a thing they did 
growing up yep. and she said i we're close to a lake we want to be lake people let's and do it last it's fun. year with covid she oh, didn't get goodness. to do all of her other summer things she we likes to do we laked it up i'm and telling you what every time aiden sees my phone in the background picture he goes that's me mommy that's me on the boat and we take deer sticks, you know, as snacks, and he and peanut can't butter burn. and jelly, the uncrustables, yep. so, and gogurts. Gogurts. So he wants all of those things and is excited to go back to the lake. So, yep. um, anyhow, I jumped into let's search what are other people doing, and I will tell you the blogs out there. Don't waste your time; <laughs> they are bad. All right, you can take your dog for a walk. Okay, that's a summer activity. Excellent. You can go outside with your dog. I mean, they were bad. All right. So broke it down into the couple of things that we really do. First of all, hikes, adventures, all of that stuff is fun. The next thing is... <laughs> God dang, people. All right. So the next thing is um, we go camping. We haven't been able to go as much recently. COVID kind of shut a lot of the group Stuffed camping. down last ah, year. We do different kind of camping, though. So we do group event. We basically create a pre-1840s city via camping. Out of canvas tents. Rendezvous. Look it up. It's exciting. And you are reenacting. It's not quite Civil War stuff. What are you, what are you I was going to say, put in there the High Plains Regional Rendezvous website. It's hprr.org. Yeah. Oops. If you go through Pat, oops, hprr.org. Yep. Okay. That'll give you guys, if you're interested in looking, an idea of what a rendezvous is. Yep. So, and if you look through past rendezvous, you will find pictures of both of us. We've been going for That's years and years and years. actually where we met and... Uh, Origin story. Yeah. Yeah. So, family's been doing it for a long time. Um, we've struggled a little bit because the dogs tie us down so much. And until more recently, we've had help, but then help fluctuates and all of those things. So, it's we struggle a little bit to get away for the extended period of time. All right. All of you that are just tuning in, tonight I am drinking wine from the Standing Stone Vineyard where I stomped the grapes with my own feet. No, no. not really. But Go back and watch the beginning. Standing Stone Vineyard, okay? So, anyhow. But we have gone rendezvousing. Boats, lake time, camping. With the dogs. Hiking. All of these things come back into last week's, which tie these things together a little bit, is heat tolerance is an important thing to pay attention to okay yes now i want to jump through each one of these on if you are interested in taking some time to do these things there are a few things i think from a, a summer standpoint that are important basics right going for a hike or a walk with your dog adventuring okay everybody here almost everybody here has a working breed and they need to be working both during the spring and summer, as much as they are attempting to or preparing to for the fall, and they're going to need the mental and physical stimulation. So you're going to be outside, and most of the country has things like fleas and ticks. Ticks primarily, especially in the north and northeast. It's horrible, horrible, horrible. Okay, so um, flea and tick preventative is a very important thing. Now, again, we're not sponsored by anybody or anything along those lines. We personally utilize Brevecto. We don't use topicals except for on little puppies because a lot of times the chewables can be... No, they have monthly chewables. Topical is a little bit easier with the little itty-bitty puppies depending on what's going on. But um, when you are going on hikes, things to keep in mind are having a, sure, a small med kit with you small like and I'm not talking on your person but if you have it along with you because stuff can happen like cut pads or torn shoulders arms whatever if you bump into barbed wire if you are in any part of the central to western part of the country that's a possibility or anything else so you need a small med kit and then also you want to have your dogs up on their flea and tick preventative heartworm preventative when you're out in the elements okay so it's something that gets overlooked. It's also something that we hear on a regular basis of, um, especially in the bird dog world, about how can I do this cheaper? 
All right. So I heard on a forum that if you use ivermectin, which you can buy a bottle at the farm and home store for $27, and it has enough to treat my dog for 10 years, even though it expires in six months, okay? Um, the long, long and short of it is, and uh, Peter, who you all have probably met or know of, okay, at, by this point. Via our channel. Yes, he, he gave me the brutally honest conversation of, are you telling me right now that you have any dogs at all that aren't worth a hundred dollars worth of medicine a year come on now okay so long story short get quality products from your vet that fit what the issues are in your area and the type of animal that you have yes so the type of animal that you have what do you mean by that well ivermectin isn't necessarily dog collies. specific yeah collies and it's I'm saying don't used use for, ivermectin out of a bottle to try and deworm your dog. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Like, and that's typically for ivermectin livestock. is a, a, a main ingredient in a majority of the heartworm medicin, medicines. Excuse me, but it's it's get some some real stuff. Okay, go to your vet, get the real stuff. It's marketed for. It's actually guaranteed to work by all of those companies. If something were to happen, for example, you have your dog on heart guard its whole life and you have your monthly things, and your dog gets heartworms, HeartGuard will pay for your dog's heartworm treatment. That is a fact, all right? If you worm your dog with ivermectin from the cattle store, they're not going to pay for your dog when it gets heartworms, okay, in which it still can't happen. All right, so hiking. The biggest thing that we have to say about that is your outdoor adventures. Make sure your dog is prepared for it. Make sure that you have a med kit, which we have a med kit that we utilize from a hunting standpoint, and any adventuring will be a good thing. It's going to be on our website very soon, and it includes all of the things that I carry, minus a couple other things that I'm actually trained to use that we didn't include for y'all. So, And sorry. it can be downsized to be more um, travel hiking friendly because uh, it's a fairly inclusive med kit. Um, and then a couple things that I would want to mention as far as taking your dog out into the wilderness, adventuring, having a solid recall would be really important because these are working dogs, like we've mentioned before, and they are prey-driven animals. So they see a deer that they want to chase or a bunny. Yeah. And in those situations, you need them to come back so that they are safe and they don't get lost. And having a solid recall, collar conditioned, would be really, really important. And last but not least, if you are in the concrete jungle, okay, let's say you don't have access, you can't go adventuring, but you want to be taking your dog for walks and runs. This is something I think that's pretty overlooked. Um, have, has anybody ever seen like, oh, this lady just fried an egg on the concrete, right? Think about Super hot. pads on that. Ridiculously hot. Okay. This would be a time a lot of people ask about if we use booties. Someone actually asked me about this in a message on, was it Patreon or Instagram? Or, or Sometimes I get confused on where these happen. But somebody was asking about boots because of hot asphalt. Yes. Um, it was probably a good idea. Lewis boots are some of the best as far as being able to stay on. They're a rubber thing. Now, granted, the dog's paw is going to get hot in that as well. It's going to get warm. Um, there are some other brands, majority of them don't stay on fantastically. Um, Lewis boots stay on pretty well, uh, but you essentially end up duct taping them on is the best way to keep them on. And then you cut the duct tape after the fact. Yeah. And we've never really used them. We've had clients that have used them and given us pointers on them. Mm -hmm. ha. Pointers. I've, I've used them. I just don't have to use them very often. When I go to Texas, I take oh. them in case I've we hit a really them. bad place that we're hunting with stickers and I'm not talking like oh I got a sticker in my paw I make dogs chew them out themselves and people say oh you're a horrible person but I mean ultimately it comes down to it I can't pick every dang sticker that the dogs gets in their paw especially if we've got two or three dogs on the we hit one patch and then all of a sudden I've got three dogs laid up because oh daddy pick the sticker out it's one sticker chew it out kid but then there are places that tough um, love tough love absolutely there's some more brutal honesty hey dog chew the sticker out you're a dog i mean what would you do if you were in the wild you'd chew the damn sticker out okay um Beep. okay but if you hit a sticker patch 
I'm saying right now, it's bad. They come out, their whole pads covered with stickers, both of them, all four of them. They run into that full board, and then they're like <laughs> stuck there. And you walk out there, and your whole body's covered in stickers, and you're like, oh, my God, I can't imagine. And then you lay them down, and you kind of comb. A comb is the key to this, and comb the stickers out because you can get through the barbs, <laughs> and you can scrape them all off really easy, and they're not also stuck to your hand. We should throw a comb in the med kit. Comb the stickers out, okay? These are all things that are Making important. Making a note of that now. Booties are, are beneficial in that concrete jungle, if you will, okay? We've talked about the hikes. We've talked about the spelunking. Somebody just mentioned in here dock diving. If you have access to that, it's freaking awesome. It's I wish fun. that we did because if you guys watch some of our stories recently where Ethan's been heading down to the pond with some of these dogs uh-huh. that are final prepping for the Navda. Um, I need to pour me some more of this. Navda test this weekend. Uh, you can see like Splash and Thunder and Tricks. They all love to launch. And Splash is totally living up to her name. She is probably a better launcher than either of the two other ones. 100%. Oh, yeah. 100%. She's pretty She's powerful. Like, to the moon, baby. So, all of those things being said, it's a lot of fun. Next thing that we specifically like to do, and I encourage everybody to do at some point in time, whether you are actually camping or you are pre-1840s camping or you are glamping, okay? All of it's fun to get out into the wilderness. It involves some of the things with the hiking stuff that we mentioned. Collar conditioning is important, but then comes to some other stuff, okay? So when we camp, we don't have the amenities. We have hot dogs when we are camping and it is warm. And there are a few different things that we have come up with. Typically, we camp around water and or have water on the regular basis for the dogs. It's important, okay? The other side of it is when we go camping as well, sometimes you have to leave camp, right? Happens a little bit. Even if it's just right around the vicinity and you need the dogs to stay in the shade so that they can cool down a little bit. Bringing a stake out is a really, really, really good option for that. And we bring them every single time we go camping. Yes. Because it's like, hey, y'all need to be out. You can't be in the tent, in your crate. You can't be in your crate outside. There's not as, there's not enough airflow, right? So you need to be out. You need to be in the shade. You need to be having access to water and cooling off and all those things. So a stake out is a really good option to bring with you. Yes. What else you got for camping? I know you said you had something. Um, place training can be really beneficial, especially if you are in a situation where you're the camping in a powerful, community setting where the most powerful yes. behavior. Yep. And one thing that we specifically with the way that we camp with being at a rendezvous and it's typically a reenactment of the pre 1840s time period. And there is shooting going on muzzle loaders and cannons sometimes even the candy cannon. There's a candy cannon. And then they do an adult candy cannon, with which is freaking sweet. You, you just pack a cannon, literally a cannon, a cannon and you put a light load in there you put the little, they call it like a wad, wad. basically over the top. So there's a barrier between the powder and and the a, t- stuff. a whole bunch of stuff, which could be a cannonball, or it could be a candy. bunch of bottles of booze or candy. And then you light that sucker off, and then poof, and a bunch of adults knock each other down for little <laughs> bottles of liquor. It's hilarious. And the little kids go crazy for the candy as yeah, well. Yeah, but yeah. cannon, big boom, muzzle odors, lots of booms. So when we go, we have to make sure that the dogs that are going with us have proper gunfire introductions. And if you're camping over the 4th of July weekend, let's say, or any other holidays that potentially could involve fireworks going off, making sure that your dog isn't going to have an adverse reaction to that noise um, and make sure that they don't have sensitivities would be really important so that we're not causing problems in those situations. 100%. I love when people read my mind because the last thing that I was going to mention about traveling and camping and all of these things is having your own water. And this is one of probably the most number one overlooked things about traveling with dogs. People are like, oh yeah, water is water. Not the case, okay? There are a lot of variances in water and it doesn't take a whole lot, especially if your dog only lives in one area and drinks one type of water a majority of the time. You have gut 
microbiome or gut health, basically, that's used to a specific thing, whether that's vitamin and mineral content or whatever else is in your water they get used to, you add something new to that, you completely change that water type, and this water could give your dogs the runs, okay? On top of the additional heat A or the traveling situation being something. stressful, yep. um, and you can have some pretty bad, bad situations. Situations, yep, so 100%. Also having a probiotic for Regular those water, probiotics in the med traveling kit. situations yep. would be good. Probiotics is always in the med kit. So the the other side about it, let's say you run out of water on the road. I always buy bottled water. Go to your gas station. You can buy a gallon jug. Not, we, we're, sorry. Sorry, pop. What, what do we call them? Fur babies. <laughs> you don't get the old, what's that expensive stuff? Smart water? Smart water. No smart water for you. You get a gallon jug of Casey's natural bottled water, okay? Whatever. It or, costs I mean, Walmart cents. is awesome because you can get the five-gallon five refillable gallon jugs. juggies. Yeah. Heck, yeah. Just go buy some bottled water. It's going to be a lot easier on their stomachs. Okay. Last but not least, we talked about lake time and boat time. Both. If you don't have the boat... And you're just headed to the lake. That's completely fine. We've done fine. that. Yep. Um, and at the lake, there's a lot of different things that you can do. You can incorporate retrieving games. Um, but at the same time, you got to keep an eye on your dog. We've seen this firsthand. We get a lot of questions about life vests for dogs. And I'm not going to say that they're a bad idea, but on average, they're unnecessary. Um, we've gone to the lake lots of times. Our dogs love to swim, which is part of it. But And they will swim for hours, literally hours. Okay. But the life vest, though we haven't ever used one, if you've got one that you have tried and mm-hmm. like and want to recommend, we'd be interested in reviewing one. Um, I do like the fact that um, most of those life vests have a handle, which getting your dog into the boat can be beneficial for because um, we have struggled every once in a while to get a dog back in the boat if we are... Handlebar works. Yep. Yeah, if we Definitely. are out past um, our swimming depth or our wading depth, I guess. The key that you want to look at um, with that is the specific type of vest, uh, as long as it's not a complete enclosure aspect of things where the dog is going to get overheated. We talked about that before as far as water warming dogs up, so keep an eye on that aspect of things, but um, those are part of it. Now, the um, I'm going to say when we go... I would say one of the biggest issues that we have, and it depends on what campgrounds and where you're at as far as how well things are cleaned up, but eating and finding and eating random things on the beach areas that we stop at or whatever. You've got to keep an eye on that. Yeah, because some of the beach areas, there's like dead fish carcasses. There could be fish hooks in those or just littered on the beach, uh, broken mm-hmm. glass bottles. So not only keeping you know, an eye out for your dog, but yourself as well um, is important. And then, um, though Ethan said, you know, some of these dogs that we take out will swim for hours, we still have to watch them. Uh, Nix is bad. insane. No, good and bad. Uh, yeah. He is a water monster and has always, always excelled at independence and duck search. So when we hit the water, he's searching. And he will just yes, gone. start getting out further and further and further from All the boat. All of a sudden, he's halfway across the lake. Scary and he, deal. Yeah, and you're like, he needs to get back here because there's other boats out there. He's not as visible. He's so low to the you know surface of the water. So making sure that your dogs aren't just swimming away willy-nilly is really important, too, to just be safe for them and other people and other boaters that are out there. Last but not least, all right, we are to the point of boat manners, and I'm going to I'm going to kind of include in there. This is going to be a lot of brutal, as brutal as I can be, and very honest comments about how stupid people are and how angry it makes me to see anyone. And I, I don't even care if you're li- listening and watching right now, okay? Because this is how I feel, right? Mm-hmm. If your dog is on the front of the goddamn boat with its paws up there and its ears flapping in the wind while you're brrrring along, 
all it takes is one extra wave, and there goes your dog. Tumble through the motor, okay? Bad deal. It makes me sick to watch dogs ride on the front of the boat. No different than dogs ride in the back of a truck, but in the boat specifically, it's bad. It's bad, okay? Don't let your dogs ride like that. Don't let your dogs cruise on the front with their ears flapping in the wind while you're cruising at 30 or 40 in your boat because I watch people do that all the time. It's ridiculous. All it takes, one wave and splash, clunk, there goes your dog, right? Just taken out by the mercury, okay? I mean, just falling in the water and being hit by the boat could be very serious. Knock them unconscious. And then They're floating there. Not floating anymore. By the time you anymore. get around to them, not floating anymore. All right, folks, this is a bad deal. Don't do that. Now, I mentioned this earlier, and I mean this. Place training is one of the most versatile and the most powerful things that you can teach your dog from all aspects of life. Now, how we specifically, and I want to create a video this summer. I wanted to do it before. I just didn't take time to do it. Um, I want to shoot a video this about how we work through boat manners. Dogs can be on the boat. They can bounce around. They can jump off when we're not moving. All of those things, there's, a, I mean, there's always a chance somebody could get hurt, but it's unlikely, okay? Our dogs like to sit on the back, little swim deck area. They jump into the water. They splash around. They need lifted back up. They swim around with us. I mean, Quest All is like it. a swimming oh, yeah. machine. She, she just, just toodles around toodles us. Around. She never it's leaves. so much fun, yeah. And um, then the other side of it is when we start motoring, the dogs are in one place. That is under. So in an average boat, you've got a couple seats or something, but the dogs are curled up in. Right there, you've got a picture of it. That's Nick's. Curled Let me up. see that picture. I can't, it's blurry on there. Oh, yeah. Okay, so explaining. Steering wheel up here, right? Dog right here at my feet. Curled up. Place training. I said kennel under here. It's a smaller enclosed area directly under the steering wheel of the boat. If you've got a boat similar to this or something, if not, you can bring a small towel even. This is something, I say that lightly because it would take a little bit, but you can bring something that says, hey, this is a little a little pad, a little spot. Hey, this is your spot. Kennel, well, stay there. I don't know if you can tell, but- There's a couple what, life jackets there, I Life think. jacket. Well, you always have on a boat, you have to have one of the throwables, throwables. Mm-hmm. and those work really well. They're not giant, um, but they're a square kind of platform-esque that the dog can have, hey, this is your your spot that you need yes. to be. So place training. That is how we utilize um, safety precautions on the boat when we're moving. Every dog kennels. We only bring one at a time, maybe two, but. If it's a puppy sometimes, because the picture, obviously, of Aiden on with the, the thumbnail with the puppy both always goes in a vex. crate. Yep, the and puppy's the, in a crate. The crate is on the opposite side in the little spot. It's just tucked somewhere. It gets pretty crowded when you bring two dogs. I'm just going to say right now. And but a baby. They all get kenneled. Stop moving. You're safe. Everything while we're moving in the boat. As well as they're not interfering with you driving and it's paying the other attention side of it, as well. 100. Yeah. Yep. Knock into you. It's just like dogs riding in cars. And I said this last time, and I'm going to say it again. If your dog's bouncing around the car, it's no good. Okay, so I have ridden with dogs outside of a crate, but they curl up and don't move. I don't ride with puppies rolling around, okay? It's just, it's asking for trouble, folks, okay? So there it is. Don't let your dang dog ride on the front of the boat with his ears flapping in the wind, getting ready to hit one more wake, kunk, tumble, tonk, 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 tonk. With their wet feet slipping on the wait, hull wait, of wait. the boat. I missed a thing. Slip, whack, tonk, 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 tonk. No more dog, all right? That's it. That's all we got for this week. Now we need to move into answering some questions because there are several of them, and I am very excited to read what they are and get some answers out to y'all. This is question number yep, one. Yep, that's here. question one. Let me make this bigger because I am lean, leaned back here. Dun, 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 From dun, dun, dun. William Chesson, why does my dog love going under? You just covered it up. I know, I'm getting there. Under the bed, trying to keep him from doing this. Okay, a couple things. First of all, I saw William Chesson is a patron. Thanks, buddy. But you have access to ask these questions there. So I just want to double say thanks for the super chat. Also, I saw you said you just switched up to VIP. Rock and roll. We appreciate the support. Okay. Um, Why does your dog love going under the bed? Man, I'm going to tell you right now, this one, 
I have no idea. It's just a dog personality thing because we have had puppies that love going under things. Vino, which is Vex's mama, was one of the most notorious under furniture dogs we've had. That little red dot. That little red dot, a tick, bit me on the arm. The sucker itches like a son of a gun, and it's right there by my watch. And I want my watch on because it tells me that I closed my circles and I feel good about myself. And it itches like crazy. Maybe okay? you wear it on the other wrist for a little while. Ah, that would be so weird. Could you imagine that? Yeah. Ah, it feels weird. Okay, Aww. continue. I'm sorry. Uh, but Vino was one of the most notorious puppies that we had for going under the furniture. And she would go and dive under the furniture. She'd dive under the bed. And she frog dogged everywhere. Yep, dive under the butcher block in the kitchen. And she would do it with so much gusto, if you will, that she would bonk the top of her head, that little mm-hmm. bone on mm-hmm. the top of her head, and it started getting puffy and um, swollen, and we had to oh, prevent done. her from doing that. Um, Dead soldier, folks. So... Because you all are curious, I'm sure. This is my one glass of wine. I drank the rest of the bottle. <laughs> it's good. Thanks, Standing Stone Vineyards. <laughs> Goodness. For um, selling me this wine that's delicious. Um, so why they love going under the bed or other furniture, I don't know. Like I said, it can just be personality. From but a natural standpoint, dogs are are more cave cozy based. caves. Like yeah, being that's in why cozy under cave things. is a product. They Crates. like nuzzling in. We have a cozy cave. Not a single dog that we own will go into it, but Not they lay on top of it like it's a dog get bed. In there, yeah. yeah. Nick's constantly and they don't even stay top. in. So, but it is a thing that a lot of dogs like to do. So, as far as the why. Dogs being dogs, man. Um, but the keeping him from doing this, if it is a problem, I'm going to say place training. Yeah. I believe that this echo, echo, echo. Did we deja vu? I think we talked about this earlier, right? Place, place training, training is can be super beneficial. So helpful in situations like this where you've got a dog that is going or doing something that they're not supposed to and it can help eliminate that unwanted or naughty behavior, whether it's counter surfing, going under furniture, jumping on guests when they come over, um, just being underfoot when you're trying to get things done, place training, place training, place training. Great question. Uh, On to the next question here. We've got from P... P P-dubs. Is that that it? Yeah, P dubs. Okay. I totally was reading that wrong. Good deal. You read it out loud. Hey guys, love what you do. I had a question about how I can correct my GSP from bumping into slash knocking over my old diabetic lab. Especially when the toys come out. Thanks. All right. So uh, I'm guessing that your GSP is young. Gur than your old lab. Than your old lab. Depends on how young. Okay. They are? This is going to sound horrible, but I'm going to say it again. Place training is going to be beneficial, okay? So it is the most versatile thing that we can teach our dogs, and it is applicable in so many different areas, um, all of which involve in those, like that high excitement environment. You're talking about playing when the toys come out, all of those things. We keep them separate. If there's problems, we stop it. We divide. Interrupt that play. It's no more, okay? Um, and I'm going to tell you right now, we're going to throw some brutally honest people out, things out there, okay? I love you all, but if you feel like sending in a video about how your dog is aggressive toward you or your kids or your other dogs or whatever, and it's a dog going, I'm going to say, all right, folks, this is not aggression. This is inappropriate play. There's a total difference. But when it comes down to being able to evaluate this, you send me a message and you say, hey, my dog is aggressive toward me and my family. And I say, okay, I need to see what is going on so that I can evaluate as best as possible. If it truly is aggression or if it's inappropriate. Yeah, what the body language of the dog is, what the situation is, what's going on here. And if you say, look, I put this bowl of food down and then I go to take it or whatever for whatever reason, the dog's like, grrrr. Okay, that's aggression. That's protecting. That's resource guarding. That's saying, this is mine. Don't touch it, bro. 
But when you're sitting there on the ground, on the couch, have toys, have things, and you're going, oh, look at my hands, and they're moving all over the place, right? That's okay? exciting. That's exciting. The dog's playing, and their the prey dog's drive. jumping at you, and they use their mouth to play as puppies. Is it inappropriate play? Absolutely. Is it still play? Yes. Do we need to teach them? Yes. But we need to s- draw the strong line between this is aggressive and this is inappropriate play. Okay. And we get dogs in for training that they get to go oh, out. Oh, the- my goodness. They get to go out and there's inappropriate play. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm three quarters this of is, a bottle of wine this in, is baby. Ethan's show tonight, guys. Yes. <laughs> But they go out to go to the bathroom in our fenced-in exercise pen and get a little bit of time to socialize. This is really good for dogs to learn appropriate play. It's also really good for dogs that might lack some socialization or some boldness and confidence. It can really help them grow as dogs. But we get to see and interrupt and handle dogs that play inappropriately. I think that a lot of dogs out there are allowed to play inappropriately because it's just easier to let the dogs play and entertain themselves, even if it's going to lead to naughty, unwanted behavior. And eventually that dog is going to play with a dog inappropriately that doesn't appreciate it, and it's going to start a dog fight. And that's why we as handlers and trainers and owners, if you will, need to step in and interrupt that play, advocate for the older dog, as well as advocate for the younger dog if the older dog is trying to put them in their place. Um, Because that's another thing. If people allow the older dog to put the younger dog in their place and it essentially just let them sort it out for themselves. Well, what does that teach the younger puppy? That that's an okay way to communicate. And then they're going to try that communication with who they think that they're in charge of, whether that's you, your wife, your kids. And they're going to say, well, it worked for this dog to tell me that they didn't want to be bothered by growling or snapping. So I'm going to try that with my people because I don't want them to take my bone or I don't want them to trim my nails or I don't want them to put my collar on. And it just teaches them that that's an okay way to communicate and it's not. So we need to interrupt that behavior, advocate for the older dog, advocate for the younger dog in the appropriate situation, whichever one needs to be advocated for, so that that isn't okay. And at this point, you need to be advocating for your older dog and saying, hey, puppy, young dog, this is not okay way to play. Um, anticipate that that's going to happen. It sounds like it's happening pretty consistently and being um, a habit of how they play, especially when toys come out. And um, if that's the case, toys can go away. I mean, um, or they can play individually or they can have place training time with those toys. Um, That's what our dogs get. They get to hang out. They get to play with toys on their dog beds, especially if it starts to escalate. We're the fun police, and we're like, nope, kennel up. That's that's not okay way to play in the house with the other dogs. And, I mean, I couldn't have said any of that better myself. The only Even though he tried. <laughs> I did, but you did a fantastic job. Aww, so thanks, honey. The, the only other thing that I can say is please don't misunderstand the fact that this is not an easy thing. This is a constant thing. This is, especially with young puppies, I mean, it's in other things, and this is digressing a little bit from the question, but it's still related in the sense that young dogs doing things that they want to, we have dogs that are designed to be driven and work and have desire, okay? And that desire goes into the category of what they want to do, which right now is running into and bumping into your old dog, okay? Playing. Hey, haha, checking up. Say, ah, got you again. Woo! And it's inappropriate, but it's going to be there. It's things like little puppies running out and grabbing uh, pieces of mulch or grabbing whatever and running around with them. How do I stop them from doing this? Well, you constantly take every freaking piece of mulch out of their mouth and pitch it back where the mulch goes and say, hey, let's go over here and play and redirect focus until they eventually get bored of chewing on the mulch. It will happen, but it is difficult. And it, yeah, it takes constant effort constant. and conditioning because 
They are dogs. Squirrel. You know, they are constantly going to be... Ethan. Wine. <laughs> yeah. They're going to constantly yeah. be testing, just like Aiden will test. Um, yeah, absolutely. And constantly need reminding, absolutely. hey, we don't throw cars in the house, or we <laughs> yes, don't spit in the house, or he likes to... <laughs> which is cute, but also not okay. Um, or... Any number of things that Aiden tries to continuously do, shrieking in the house. That's mm-hmm. an inside voice well, thing. Well, he's learned from Daddy to whistle at the dogs. Well, his whistle is a high-pitched, like, shriek thing. Because he can't he can, whistle. He can't whistle yet. So, anyhow, we're working on it. But It takes um, constant supervision and reminding, and our hard work pays off because eventually he short, gets there, and it will pay off with your dogs, sorry, too. Sorry, I thought you were done. Long story short, you need to interrupt the play. You need to anticipate what's going to happen and prevent it from happening. I do want to mention one quick thing in here because JT said one good tip for helping dogs in the summer, freeze some watermelon chunks and give it to the dogs. Not necessarily ideal. We talked about that last week as far as ice-based things when dogs are hot. Now, if the dogs aren't overheating, not as big an issue. Kind of like a pupsicle. Yes. That's not the end of the world, Okay. But keep in mind, that's not going to be a fix for a dog that's overheating. Just that's the only caveat I want to pitch out yeah, there. Yeah, if they're ice, in the process of bad. overheating Shock. or heat that. exhaustion. But as a cool, refreshing treat for your dog in the summer heat. Sounds like sounds fun. Sounds like an awesome thing. All right, Josh Hickman, you've got a question here, and we appreciate you throwing it up. It says a little early, but with the 4th of July coming up, what do you have for his recommendations? She'll be eight months old, and the first fireworks live in the city. Live, okay. live in the city. You live in the city. Okay. All right, so as far as this goes, we hear this all the time. It's a every year, every all the time kind of thing. We don't have fireworks out here. We live in the country. In the city, you've got a bunch of turds shooting them off, off at all times all of the, the time. day yep. night whatever so yep. you, it's like well i gotta let my dog out to potty who knows when the fireworks are going to be going off two things that i can recommend for you when the fireworks are going to be consistent dark room created over um and then like uh noise white noise, white noise something background noise to background mute noise. the yes. potential sound of loud fireworks 100 percent um Number two, do not coddle the situation, right? So you're outside peeing your dog, minding your own business, and then kapow, M80 in the back, right? Okay, startles the dog. You act as if it doesn't exist. All right, let's go. Come on, move along. That didn't happen. Then we get them out of that situation and we move on about our business. You don't say, oh, baby, it's okay. It was just a firework, right? We're okay with this. Even though you're scared, I'm telling you it's okay to be scared about this, all right? So coddling, not ideal. Act as if it didn't happen. And then also when you know it's going to be consistent, move them into that area with the white noise, background noise, so that they don't hear it. And um, one other thing that I want to mention is – People say, well, my dog is fine with gunfire when they're hunting. Mm -hmm. They'll be fine with fireworks. Well, that's not the case. When they're hunting and there's something to be excited about, they aren't going to have a problem with gunfire. But those fireworks don't have anything to be positively associated with. So don't just be like, oh, well, my dog's got a bird and gun intro. We're good to go to the fireworks show. That's not the case. Um, We have a dog, Snap that she is terrified of thunderstorms. And I'm assuming, given the opportunity, she would also be terrified of fireworks. Great hunting dog. Yep. But um, we're not saying, oh, well, she's a hunting dog. She should be fine with the other things because there's no positive association. And the one other caveat that I wanted to mention with Ethan mentioning going out to potty and having that non-coddling response and just ignoring it, that's definitely a good thing, Um, as well as redirecting their focus quickly um, so that they can't dwell on the fact that they just got scared out of their mind or startled or whatever by the gunfire, or not the gunfire, sorry, the fireworks. Um, Puppies or dogs that are super driven for bumpers. You know it's coming on fireworks season. You're going out to potty. You try and limit the amount of time that they're outside during that firework season, but bring a bumper with you when you go outside. Then if that firework goes off, you can redirect them 
and get them pumped up and excited to make a retrieve so that potentially you can even associate positively that loud noise gets them an exciting reward, if you will, which is kind of how we do gunfire introduction. So you can potentially make the fireworks have a positive association. It's a great idea. I love it. Great question. Dawn Fish Hunt. Buddy, you are here every week, and we appreciate you. I'm going to say right now, uh, 15-week-old GSP will not move an inch with the easy lead over their muzzle. Okay? Okay. There's a few things here. Um, first of all, step number one, step number one is to get the dog used to the lead. So... If your dog is struggling with that, you shouldn't be worried about moving an inch. You should be worried about a little bit of pressure on, a little pressure off. And then we have a video where we talk about the easiest way to help them start moving, and that is not forward, okay? It is actually laterally. Now, um, as we evolve things, we get more opportunities to work with dogs, and I actually have done the last few years, not including last year because of COVID crap, we went up to Minnesota. There's a show called The Game Fair. It's all dog-based, hunting dog-based, primarily dog-based show, okay? We brought Easy Leads up there for a few years in a row and sold them, and I would just say, hey, I bet you in 10 minutes or less, I can get your dog to heal loose lead as this dog's dragging someone through the show. I can get your dog to walk loose lead or you get this lead for free. And then people are like, sure, done, right? Or they'd be like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm good, I'm good. And then they keep walking and then... A couple hours later, they come back out and get like, dang, can you help this dog stop I'm, pulling I'm me I'm tired around? of getting drug around by this mm-hmm. dog. <laughs> and I'm extremely confident that I can get every dog to do this in less than 10 minutes. And that's why we put the videos up that way. That's why I bet people at the show, 10 minutes or less, time me, start now, okay? Let me get the lead while you're starting the timer. That's how confident I am about it. And it comes down to properly introducing and then helping the dog through it. And that um, lateral movement makes a big difference. So if you got the dog used to it and they're comfortable and, okay, you can tug on it a little bit and they don't freak out, that's fine. If you're freezing, that's not a bad thing. You step laterally through the dog. So the dog's on your left side. That's where we start, everybody, because primarily people are right-handed. You have a gun or stuff in your right hand. You have your dog on the left, out of the way, basically. And you walk through them. As you walk through them, they're going to take one or two steps, and then they, and you stop them again. So there's no pressure on while you're stepping through them, and then pressure comes back on. Hey, stop. As soon as they stop, pressure comes off. Then once you start asking them to go forward, you need to make sure that there's no pressure on the lead at all. And you encourage them, hey, come on, follow my fingers. Let's go. Woo, 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 woo. Then they walk forward, and then you stop them. One or two steps at a time, showing them that they can walk when the pressure is off. You can't tug them forward. Tug means stop and stand still. Don't move. Okay? If they are walking, there should be no pressure on the lead. You can use your hand. You can make woo, 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 woo noises and get the dog to walk ahead. Okay? Um, encouraging noises is encouraging. basically what those are. Boop, 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 boop. Those are all the noises. I don't make good ones, all right? Most of the dogs understand they're fake. Boop, 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 boop. So I got to get people with real noises over here that are excited about the dogs moving forward. I'm really good at the calm down kind of thing, okay? Um, unless I've had a bottle of wine, then I'm all about the hoo doo doo Now, Um, if that is the case, I would love for you to send us a video. I want to see if you're still struggling and I would be happy to help you through it. 15 weeks old. You got a dog that's over four months old. It should be no problem to start working. Almost four months old. Math, baby. Math. Uh, you got a dog that's almost four months old. It's probably on the beginning stages of that. Usually four months to five months is kind of when we like to start. But even if you're just doing a few sessions where they get more comfortable with a little pressure, stop, and then stand there, it's okay. The more encouraging you are, the better things will be. Next super chat question from Jake from State Farm. Jake Tekasik, the message message was retracted. retracted. So Where are you at, Jake? Did you re-type it up somewhere? Jake. Jake. Okay, Jake. Jake. 
you retracted your message <laughs> and you super chatted us. So please message us what your question is so that we can get that answered for you. I don't see you, Jake. Don't see it I don't either. see anything else anywhere. All right, next super chat says, Andrew Mack, thanks for helping me find a puppy. Andrew, you are very welcome. Thanks for the super, super chat. chat. We appreciate it. And we've got Sam says, uh, thank you, with a... Cute little pair. Pair-looking guy. Work, a with workout a, pair. A workout pair. Well, thank you. We, we appreciate that, too. So unless unless Jake's going to chime in here, what we're going to do is uh, probably call this a wrap. We had an absolutely fantastic time chatting with you all. Um, I'm almost out of wine. Which is a good thing. You want another sip? I'm good. Okay. I bet I'm going to have a baby that wants to uh, eat in a little bit, so... I want. I don't want to just cut it off this instant mm. in case Jake t- chimes I don't in. I want to give Jake some time. Yep. Anybody else have anything that they want to? Oh heck quickly? yeah! Look at that, Jordan's Harvest. LOL. Loud noises. Thanks for tuning in. I was just seeing if there's anything else. Uh, this is a good one. I want to answer this one while okay. we're waiting on Jake. Answer it, Jake. Where are you at, buddy? Throw us some stuff. By the time I get done answering this question, if you haven't responded with your question, unfortunately, we're going to have to call it a night. But, Eli, do you believe in teaching recall without a collar? And what do you say when people question your use of an e-collar with your dog? That is an absolutely excellent question. And, yes, 100%, we believe in teaching recall without a collar. We believe... We believe in teaching all of the behaviors that we're going to be reinforcing with an e-collar first through positive reinforcement. Um, We teach recall. We teach place training. We teach positive pigeons. We teach um, healing. All of these things are taught with positive reinforcement first. And whether that positive reinforcement involves treats or birds um, or affection and attention and praise, all of those things are positively reinforced. What happens though is you get dogs, especially dogs that are independent working breeds that are bold and confident, they kind of come into their own. And for most of them, they come into their own around, I don't know, 12 to 20 weeks where they become more curious about their environments, more excited to explore, and they just turn their ears off because they'd really rather do their own thing, then come for a treat, or do their own thing, then stay on their dog bed. And um, those are the situations that we can introduce an e-collar to make that behavior more solid, more conditioned, um, and them respond more consistently. So, oh, and it looks like Jake got his question in there. So, awesome. We'll get that as soon as I finished answering Eli's question about e-collars. So we utilize e-collars through negative reinforcement to build consistency. And when those puppies, when those dogs decide that they don't really want to listen for a treat, we can still hold them accountable and say, hey, you know how to do this and you need to do this when we ask. Because again, we have to advocate for our dogs. We are the adults. We are the supervisors. We are the responsible parties for those animals. And they don't necessarily know when they need to listen because it's even a safety issue where they're running towards the road. We need to make sure that they are able to be recalled in a timely fashion when we call the first time so that they are safe. Um, As well as e-callers have come a long way in the years I mean, in the past, they probably weren't the best training tool, um, but now with vibrate, low levels of stimulation, things like that, they are a very powerful training tool if used properly. And like I said, everything is first taught with positive reinforcement and then reinforced through negative reinforcement with those e-collars for a more consistent response as well as a response that's going to happen in those high distracting, potentially even dangerous situations. Great answer. Let's answer Jake's question. 
Ah, uh, you got another love the lashes, baby. Whoop. Aw, thank you. All right. So um, I want to mention this because uh, Kelly asked about tick prevention, said she's got a lot of... For humans. For humans. Stop that. So um, tick prevention, the thing is, like, I'm training. I probably pulled 7 to 10 off of me. I got the one that bit me here. Usually I catch them crawling. I'm pretty, like, creepy crawly. Then you get the like the phantom ticks crawling, and after you find one, there's a hundred more crawling. Um, yeah, and you think you got them all, and then the one bites you. However you say that, Promethean, Promethean something. None of it's really perfect, but um, there is 100% DEET stuff, which can also supposedly cause cancer. In I the state know. of California. In the state of California, specifically. Not I picking, but everything says that. Okay, About California. So, um, but... You can treat things. I've heard that there's some stuff that you can treat your clothes and then you don't wash them. You just wear those pants or whatever, and that helps. I don't know. I mean, literally, I find ticks every time we go out all the time, no matter what I do, and it's horrible. And someday I'm probably going to get that red meat aversion coma patient disease thing from ticks or something worse like Lyme disease, Rocky Mountain spotted fever, any of the things, all of it's bad. Ticks are bad, yes. okay? Um, but they're they're part of the stuff that we live in. I don't really know that there's good tick prevention out there. Just throwing that out there. There are some things. I don't think it's good. Jake, your question. Five and a half, 5.5, half month old GSP male. You're using the MR1100 for recall. Sometimes the vibration seems to not phase him when distracted. Collar snug around the neck. This is an absolutely fantastic question and a common thing that comes up all the time. You are not alone, buddy. Because, like I mentioned in my last little tirade about e-collars, is eventually the treats don't mean as much because the dogs still want to do what they want to do. And then eventually, especially with bold and confident dogs, that vibrate might not mean quite enough in those really high distracting situations when those dogs adrenaline is really pumping, um, especially when you start hunting or have them on birds, things like that. And you need to be able to get a better response. And that's why we talk about proofing the collar, where we can transition from vibrate to stimulation. And again, we start with low levels of stimulation. We always wanna use the lowest level of stimulation that the dog is actually going to respond to, but we also need to know that they are going to have a full understanding of how to respond to stimulation on the collar before we get into a situation where it needs to happen like a dangerous situation where the dog is running towards the road, chasing a bird or a bunny or a deer, and we need them to be able to turn around now. Well, their adrenaline's pumping, their prey drive's kicked in, and if we don't get them turned around in a timely fashion, it could be bad. So we need those dogs to actually understand how to respond to stimulation on the collar, not just vibrate in those situations. Um, So we talk about proofing the collar, which means introducing stimulation for recall in an enclosed, less distracting situation so that we see that the dog truly knows how to respond to the stimulation just like they were responding to vibrate. And we have a video with legend that I showed vibrate versus stimulation. And I think that's the name of the video, um, vibrate versus stimulation. Um, And that is a really good one to watch about how to proof the collar. I'm just going to look it up because that, did you guys know that that is how you can search things on YouTube? It's like a video search engine. So Standing Stone Kennels. YouTube is a search engine. For videos, yeah. And if I search Standing Stone Kennels, it should bring up all of our videos. But then I'm going to say Standing Stone Kennels vibrate versus stim. What comes up first? Nothing. Nothing because it's searching. (gasps) Okay, so not the first video, but the second video, um, because we actually have talked about vibrate versus tone in a Yawa before, and that was the name of the title of the video on the top. Closer, 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 closer. Too close, too close, too close. That one. But then this is the one that I was talking about. Vibrate versus stimulation with thunder. 
or no, legend, sorry, one of those dogs, one of those boys. So searching Sanding Stones Vibrate versus Stim, that video will come out up, and that is the one that I was talking about that we show how we proof the collar. I actually, um, I think he found a dead frog at the beginning, a dried up dead frog in the beginning of this video, and that's what was used as the hook or intro of the video, of course, because I was making gross faces, so why not? Anyway, thanks everybody for watching, folks. We're Ethan out of wine. Finished an entire bottle of wine. No, 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 minus a himself. glass. Come on now. Minus a glass. Yeah. It was good wine, and it's only uh, who cares? Percent alcohol by volume. We're out of wine. We're out of time. We appreciate y'all. We appreciate the support, the questions, the fun, the camaraderie, the super chats, all of the stuff. And as always, we will see you next week to talk about breeding, whelping, and raising litters of puppies, as well as answering more of your questions. And I will have, I'm already preparing for as brutally honest as I can make a comment about breeding dogs. I have a couple as well. Ooh, I probably have good. more than Ethan does on this topic. I don't so. believe you because I'm brutal and honest as I can be. I don't have a filter. Uh, Especially if has... he's had a bottle of wine. Yes, I won't be drinking wine next week. We may jump into some mojitos or something. Ooh. It's summertime. It's hot. It's refreshing. All right, folks, that's us signing off. I'm the guy